There are 100 days on board in the Minecraft's infected ocean. My team prepared hardcore survival in the endless ocean, which will become more and more infected every 10 days. It's possible to move around the world by various water transport like ship, bathyscaphe, and even a raft. Some of them could be upgraded and decorated inside. The ocean will become infected, and terrifying sea monsters will appear. All life demises slowly. It is in our power to try to survive and save the ocean from fast spreading virus, despite the difficulties. To start with, we will appear on a tiny rock without any resources and without an understanding how to begin our survival. Does anybody hear me? We have the richly detailed map with a huge focus on survival and on the plot component as well. My builders prepared cool generations of dungeons and vital locations for the plot. Limited amount of resources will make us use our heads and act for finding the ship to sail around the world and try to save our world from the infection. It's Zeman and let's get 30,000 subscribers in my telegram channel where I post news and behind the scenes videos and also 50,000 likes on this series if you want me to release a sequel. Let's go! First day I appeared on a small stone and there was an endless ocean and a huge number of sharks around me. I see a huge number of fish as you can see. Their fins stand out very much. I have a tent, some kind of bones and this tiny rock on which I appeared. Time to collect the bones. But I had not noticed yet that there was a broken abandoned ship behind me and I definitely wanted to swim to it but it was not that simple. Oh no 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 1 HP 1 HP gosh sharks are following me wow they almost ate me. It was obvious that it was impossible to get to the ship so simply especially considering the fact that I only had 3 HP. So I had to come up with a different plan. Well, we have no choice except diving down. As you can see, we even have some corals there. Okay, let's go. After my diving underwater, I noticed a huge amount of jellyfish, as well as a box in which was a message from my team, flippers, a silkworm, and most importantly, a block of dirt, because in this world, it is rare. Hi, Zeman. You got into the endless ocean, which is infected. Don't worry, you will start to notice changes soon. You have to be ready for them. Nobody knows which creatures live at the bottom of the ocean, especially the infected one. A ship crashed on the rocks not so far from you. Maybe there will be some information. Okay, got it. We will put on flippers and try to find something else at the bottom. At the bottom, there was a huge amount of useful resources. I even found a bandage and a compass, and most importantly, an oak ceiling that was extremely necessary for me. As you may have noticed, in these 100 days, the interface of oxygen indicators was changed. My team added a huge number of mods to the underwater world to interact with it. Survival has also become more hardcore due to the addition of character leveling mod, which I will talk about later. Well, what do we have? I have a piece of dirt, which I'll put right here. I have an oak that I will place on the dirt, and I have a compass, which probably shows something. But honestly, I don't understand any of it. I also remember that I have bones, so I made some bone meal and grew a tree very quickly. The first tree in our survival is ready. Why are you looking at me? I won't go into the water there. Eat some jellyfish or something. So let's get the tree now just like this. Shark, did you see that? What the hell happened? Seems like my team decided to bring physics into Minecraft. And now to get this tree, we'll need to go through a huge amount of sharks that have already come here. Okay, I have an oak and we can at least make a crafting table. But I still don't know what to do with this shark because it just won't let me come down. It took so long, but I finally dealt with this shark and I was able to come down and get my tree. Also, out of three hearts, I finally got ten again. Apparently my team wanted me to be scared in the beginning of survival. I also found an ancient saber underwater, so I hope this thing can protect me. I made better tools after making my first pickaxe and got some cobblestone. Achievement! At first glance, we are in a world with limited resources, and yes, we are. There are no those familiar things that we usually see in Minecraft or in my survivals. The main thing is to turn your wit and you can get anything you want. Well, almost. On the same day, I also grew another tree, got some cobblestone underwater, and also expanded the territory of my island a little bit. One of the main problems was food, because it was not clear where to get the food from. I caught one fish, made a stove, tried to fry it, and it worked. The first day was ending, and the night was slowly falling. The first day has ended, and we dealt with it pretty good. Let me remind you that the ocean will become more infected every day, so I had to get a move on. I want to add that in the future, you'll be able to see how my level jumps back and forth. This is a visual bug in one of the pumping mods, so my level actually remains the same as it was. I still had no idea how to make it to the ship or where to find it, so let's see what happens next. Day 2. Today the infection of the ocean is turned on, so now every 10 days, it'll become greener and greener. At the same time, causing a huge amount of monster mutations like the Kraken or Leviathan to appear. And also, infecting everything around and the islands as well. To start with, I decided to check the color of the water on the second day. I didn't see much difference on the surface, but underwater the difference was noticeable. Wow guys, the color of the water has changed. As I understand, every day it'll be getting greener and greener. Okay, I hope there's nothing to worry about for now. I had a lot of plans for today. First of all, deal with this mod. It allows you to get ores without going to the mine because we just don't have mines. In this case, we can use a sea. Sifting through which gravel, sand or dust, you can get different resources ranging from different fossils to random drops, as well as seeds. Now, 
now we will make this wooden hook. We will definitely need it. We have this worm which can help us infect our leaves like this. Now the leaves will become infected and when they become as white as possible we can safely gather string from it. In the meantime, while the tree was infected, I decided to make the seed. Guys, we have two new items ready. This is the barrel and this is the seed. We need them to get various items that we cannot get because we are in the ocean. Meanwhile, as you can see, our leaves have already become completely infected and we can safely knock out a large amount of threads from it just like this. So now we have a lot of threads. One and a half stack. I also need to make a hammer which can help me get gravel by breaking cobblestone and by baking gravel I could get sand. Which is incredible because it turns one block into another. Using the hammer I can easily get flint from cobblestone. For now we have a lot of rocks down here so there's not much to worry about. Then throughout the day I just sifted different blocks through this sieve. Also improving the grid I was even able to get 25 small pieces of iron from which I made 6 pieces of iron that I spent on improving the grid so that I could knock out as many cool resources as possible. As strange as it may sound, I'm enjoying the survival mode in a certain way. The second day is almost over and that's what I got by sieving all day. Well, except those six irons that I used to improve the sieve. We have coal here, lapis lazuli and flint and even some glowstone dust. The only problem is that we only have one block of land and I haven't seen land anywhere else. Probably it could be right near the ship and we need to collect it all. The second day was coming to an end but something mystical happened at night. The water was absolutely calm and while waiting in the distance I saw some huge horrible creature. Oh my gosh what is that monster? To be honest it's getting a little bit scary. There is some kind of flying floating cheetah. If it was possible to climb into this tent, I would gladly do it. After I calmed down a little bit, I realized that I could easily make a bed and put it in my tent. Okay guys, now we can go to sleep. On the third day, I was finally going to get on the ship. To do this, I needed to make some kind of water tool and I was pretty sure that I could not craft any huge ship, but it was possible to make a raft. Well, it's time to craft our first vehicle and it'll be a raft. Okay guys, our main task now is to not get caught by these sharks because I feel that they're already freaking angry. Oh my god, okay, just landing around here, uh, just landing around here. Whew, look at how many sharks we passed. And according to that skeleton, someone was unlucky. The shark wants to climb in and eat me too, but not today. The ship was standing here because it hit a reef. There was a huge hole in it and it probably crashed. But now here I am and I want to find something useful. But this survival was done by my team. So in such a location, there will always be someone who wants to stop me. Oops, and on the ship there are some goblins. Look, okay, but nothing will stop me. Today we will completely loot the ship. Look, there is even a rat. Oh my God, come on goblins, leave me alone. It's better to use a hatchet. Oh guys, we did great. So we need to have a bite of fish and go further to explore this ship. We will move as carefully as possible. I started to find cool loot and my mood got better. And even a rat burger. Eat your rat burger by yourself. Uh, I'd rather eat a fish. Whoa, wow, there's even oranges. At least we have some normal food. There are silkworms and more silkworms. There's also a zombie and a skeleton here. Oh my goodness. Fishing net, excellent. And protective headphones here. By the way, you can put them on. Let's listen to music. There were plenty of monsters and the problem was that I didn't have any armor, so it was extremely hard. I even had to use the super bandages that were added in this survival. Half HP left, no way, half HP! I need to eat some fish really quick. The battle with the monsters on the ship was long and exhausting. It seems to me that I've never had such a small amount of HP in survivals. The difficulty was caused by the lack of armor or normal weapons, and I had to literally believe in luck. I lost my nerve! <clears throat> okay, here we go. Time to loot this ship. Okay guys, we will go downstairs. I hope that there will be no surprises. But I already have a revolver. This is at least something. Okay, white sleeping bag, not bad. Damn zombie! Zombie here! I thought that I'd be looting the ship, but as a result I had to fight the monsters again. This survival is much harder than I thought. Finally clearing the lower deck, I started looking around for the trunk. And luckily, I found a pouch that added an extra three slots to my inventory. Basically a backpack. As well as a Swiss knife that made a full-fledged workbench right in my inventory. Not bad. Hen, what did you forget here? If there are zombies, damn, skeletons, run away, I will save you. As soon as I started to think that there were no more monsters on the ship, they just appeared out of nowhere. But all this torment was not for nothing, because in one of the last cabins, I found a very important lead that is connected to the ship. This is a legendary ship, a yacht that will allow you to explore the world to the fullest. To find it, you have to try. No coordinates, only your own exploring of the ocean will help you. There are actually many different locations around. Good luck. Wow, what an amazing yacht. We definitely 
badly need it, guys. This is a lead to one of the available ships in the survival. Yes, you heard it right. We have more than one. There are bathyscaphes and liner. We can find all this by exploring the infected ocean. And of course, I did not miss the opportunity to collect some dirt from the reef mound and cobblestone because there was none left near my house. It was already getting dark and we had to return home. The only problem was that I had half a heart and if a shark suddenly bites me, then this will be the end of our survival. I could not allow this, but at my own risk, I tried to slip through. Neatly, guys. Neatly. Okay, guys, we're home. Day four. I had plans to explore the territory of the ocean around today. Maybe I'll be able to find something. The first thing I decided to do was to expand my island a bit. Besides, I had land and could grow more wood. By the way, with the help of the seedlings, we can also create land. Look, we just click the right mouse button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeds have been put in. Now, as you can see, the earth is being created here. And when it is ready, we'll be able to pick it up and put it down as well. It seems like in our survival, it is possible to create dirt. Have you ever seen something like this? I knew my team and could guess that some places that I can explore definitely should be near my spawn. At the first part of the day, apart from sharks, I did not find anything. How many of these sharks are here? But then, from the other side where I did not swim, I saw the debris that floated in the water. In this way, my team was trying to show that there is definitely something interesting. Look, a parrot! Damn, where is it from? What a cutie, guys. We will definitely tame it. Look, wow, I see some kind of debris on the surface and a huge amount of corals. Look, something's abandoned down there. And by the way, not far from our spawn. Apparently, this is some kind of abandoned sunken tanker. It's good that we noticed it. What I'm mostly pleased with is that there were no sharks around, no sea creatures, and I felt safe. I even collected some pebbles that dropped ores. We should try to find something useful here. There are boxes here. Look, oh, a pistol, bullets, bandages. Damn, yes, it's useful. We'll need it. Another box, a bucket of lava, and two notes. I'll take it all. My team didn't give me a lot of loot. I decided to dive again, but I didn't find more boxes. But I got a lot of dirt that you can't just find in the ocean. The most valuable things that I found were two pieces of paper and a bucket of lava. Using a bucket of lava, we can make an endless cobblestone generator, and the notes contain the following interesting points. When I return home, the first thing I decided to do is read the notes that I found in the dungeon. Bathyscape, the most advanced technology of humanity. This machine allows you to travel underwater at incredible speeds. It's lost somewhere in a giant reef named Megalodon. Damn, I would like to ride this thing, but the Megalodon reef confuses me a little. So we have another note here. The ocean is dangerous. At first you don't even understand how many monstrous and inexplicable things are here. I don't like it at all. Damn it. We have to be careful. Day 5. Morning. Of course, firstly I decided to make an infinite source of cobblestone. Today we'll have a construction date so that we'll build as many cobblestones as possible and expand our territory. I was also going to make a separate place for a tree farm, expand my island and prepare a platform for building a house. At night, I build its foundation. The sixth day came. There were only four days left before the first mutations in the ocean, but I was not going to leave my main business. That day, I got many plans. Good morning, guys. This is my new home. Actually, everything changed a little here in a day. I'll give you a tour. This is our generator of our amazing cobblestone. There's a sieve here, a barrel, and a box. Going inside, here we have a couple of trunks, a bed, and there's a second floor where we have trunks as well. On this day, I wanted to go on the same ship and got all sorts of decorative blocks and building blocks there, just for slightly diversifying my buildings. On the seventh day, I improved my house a little and also swam around the neighborhood, looted a couple more dungeons and found a lot of cool resources. Look, what kind of location is this? It seems like some kind of ruined house underwater. That's weird. There are sharks swimming here, actually. I don't really like that. So, an abandoned house, a wooden jacket and some kind of sword. Damn, that's cool. Corals, wh why did you start beating me? The jacket is nice. Well, another box. In the second box, I found some kind of curbstone. I didn't even know back then that this curbstone would be useful to me when I'll start upgrading my own ship. I found a thing that restores HP and also a magic wand, but I could not use this magic wand yet. I also found another underwater location that is even more noticeable from the surface. It's a plane or some kind of ship. And again, a lot of corals below. Let's look for loot. Seriously? Gypsum? Okay, let's take it. Who knows when you can break a leg, especially in this survival. So here we have a reinforced oxygen reservoir, rotten flesh, and a mesh fiber. Not that bad. I don't know why I need this mesh fiber, but we came to look for loot. Look at how green the ocean is already getting. I don't like it. Nobody knows what will happen on the 10th day. At the bottom, I also found a couple of boxes and most importantly, a diving mask. I'm a diver. The amount of oxygen under the water has increased, but it would be better if I had a bathyscape. I also found a note from which I found out that this is not a plane. It's a space shuttle that landed here. Sun was setting and I decided to go home. Good morning. Today is our eighth day. First, check out my amazing 
amazing pirate hat. But now I want to say that we have 21 blocks of land, which is quite impressive for this survival. Today, I decided to make a farm because I had some trouble with food because the fish were constantly disappearing somewhere. But wheat would be nice. I began to sift through it with a sieve and got so many different seeds. Literally from five dirt blocks, I got so many seeds. Guys, we have a full-fledged farm here, so make sure to like this video. Yes, no one knows how long this will be our home. My plans were to find a ship as soon as possible and go on a trip, but I haven't seen it on the horizon, so a farm would be nice. The whole ninth day I was busy in my own forest, cut it down and then cleared my territory. I got quite a lot that time. And then the tenth day came, which I was waiting for from the beginning of survival. Look how the world has changed. Some kind of mud began to appear on the water. The water turned green. Now, sometimes I saw various monsters, which as I thought, could attack me at any moment. And and also, new monsters began to appear, and I understood that this is only the beginning. We need to find a ship as soon as possible to resist this infection. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's normal. There are some kind of huge giant toads. Outside the window, there is just a huge amount of some kind of bushes. Seems like we're on a swamp. Some kind of iguana is looking at me. Maybe they're all good. Uh, ouch! I also had a gun, which I couldn't load because I wasn't leveled enough to do it. You may have noticed throughout the survival that we have a black bar in the lower right part of the screen. It fills up when we kill monsters, and just because of this, we get points that allow us to develop our character. For example, better use of medicines and 63 skills that are available for improvement. And in this case, we weren't leveled enough, so we will try to develop to unlock new skills. I don't know what kind of lizards they are, but they seem harmless. I like this thing! Oh no, 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 get away from me! So, some kind of pumpkin fell out, as well as a nether quartz. Gift or fraud? Well, can I put it on? Or what can I do with it? This is a gift! We are lucky! Guys, I got an iron block! I got nine iron! But in some way, I already like these monsters. Apart from the fact that I broke my leg. Look, and now I need to fix it somehow. Harvesting the farm, I remembered that in one of the underwater dungeons, I found gypsum, which could help me. Come on. Oh, it worked. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do. In the evening, I decided to go on a journey again, and I wanted to try to find some kind of clue related to the ship, but I did not find any. On the 11th day, I decided to continue searching, and I found the most interesting thing in all of survival. It was a tropical island. Look, we finally found something incredible. This is the first land that I found in this survival. Wow, even ducks are meeting us. Look! In the boxes on the shore, I found a revolver, which became useful literally in two seconds. Oh, what a bunch of swamp monsters are here! Infected monsters were already everywhere, and even on this island, and there will be even more. On the hill of the island there was an abandoned building, so when I ran away from the monsters, I decided to explore what was there. So, I knocked out five Halloween gifts, but I don't want to open them just yet. Most of all, I'm interested in getting the abandoned castle. Oh, there are different pumpkins. So, what is this? Well, wait a minute! Oh my god! This yacht is exactly what we've been looking for all these days. And finally, we'll be able to travel on the ocean. But there was a small problem. The yacht did not have an engine. I found a note that said the following. I'll leave this yacht here. This cave is perfect for it. The only thing is that I came here on a sail and the engine was lost because of the attack of a sea monster. Perhaps at one of these coordinates, you can find a crashed plane that was transporting spare parts. And then you'll be able to turn it on. I hope it'll get into good hands. So, we had to find the engine. And we had three places where it could be. Finally, after so many days, I found the ship. Okay guys, let's look at the boxes around and see if I can sail on this ship. Here, we have some wool pants. We will definitely wear them. Now, we should be warm in this tropical world. Here's another diving mask. Cool. Wow, another note. My research suggests that the infection will progress. Ordinary animals will disappear. Only mutants will remain. I heard that there is a giant ice island with ordinary animals which are frozen in ice. And if they'll be free, then the infection will slow down because their DNA has already adapted to this infection. Perhaps these ices are here. What? That's very far away. Okay, I feel like we can can't get there without this yet. We need to try to find the engine as soon as possible. Today was probably the busiest day yet. Firstly, we found the yacht and found out that for starting it, we need an engine. And secondly, we found out that there is a location very far away from here, which can help us temporarily slow down the infection. And perhaps for this survival, we can do it several times. At the end of the day, I decided to collect all the weed and watermelons that were on the island. The next day, I finally decided to change my raft and craft a better boat. It was certainly not a yacht, but also pretty good. And it had a sail. On the same day, I decided to go to the first coordinates. So, I'm sailing on the coordinates. It must be around here somewhere. Okay, let's stop here. Not a bad boat at all. Wait, what is this? Is this some kind of underwater station? Someone is walking down there. Look, it's a skeleton. Okay, how can I get inside? 
Let's try from below. Oh, here's the entrance. Here's the entrance. The location is incredible. A whole underwater base. But there was no sign of the engine. Wow, I went into some kind of underwater base. I even found a storage stove and some kind of box. But the main thing wasn't there. Okay, where is my engine? I decided to return home because I couldn't find the engine. On the 13th day, I went to the following coordinates. But another island was in the way. The cool thing about it is that there is a crashed plane located right in the center. I wonder if we can find the engine for our yacht right there. We sail to the next location and here is a huge island. I see a zebra on the shore and some monsters again. Okay, they used to scare me. Wait, what are you doing in my boat? We got on another island and I decided to go to the center to find something useful. Wait, is this an abandoned plane? Damn! Okay, we'll think about the treehouse later. But why is it here? It looks very epic. Searching the plane, I found a note that said that this plane was transporting various spare parts for surface equipment. But I couldn't find anything at all. I think we're on the right way. We should explore the island even more carefully. Oh look, what a cute bridge. Let's cross it. I see some houses there. There was a surfing school on the island, a kind of recreation center where people learn to surf. Going around the houses, I found a lot of useful information. Firstly, some strange creatures were seen on the southern part of the island. And secondly, someone stole a mango. Guys, who stole all the mangoes from the warehouse? This is not the first time. Please confess. Yeah, whoever stole all the mangoes, confess. I decided to go from the surfer school to the southern part of the island, where as they said, they saw some strange people. Yo, Tree, are you seeing this? These are some kind of aborigines. I hope they're not aggressive. Ooh, Kuko, I hope we can talk to him. Greeting, stranger. We saw you were looking for something at our totem, and we understand exactly what it is you're looking for. This thing is with us, and we can give it to you. But we need seashells. Bring us 15 seashells, and we will give you what you need. Seems like the totem is the plane, and probably they stole my engine, so I have to look for seashells. I spent the whole 14th day on this. It was quite difficult, because they were not everywhere, and I needed to look for seaweeds as soon as possible, because seashells could be near those seaweeds. I collected 15 shells, and came to them on the 15th. Day. They gave me the engine and now I just rushed to my yacht to finally turn it on. Now we can just put the engine as well as the propeller. Done. The mast was quite tall so I had to remove some of the mountain to fit the yacht through. It happened on the evening of the 17th day. Now we can really call it a hundred days of survival on a ship in an infected ocean. Guys, you won't believe it. I'm sailing on my own yacht right now. I always wanted to have a yacht in real life but now I have one in Minecraft. What a beautiful sunset and even parrots are flying by. Finally, we we have a vehicle that will allow us to explore the whole world that my team has created. On the 18th day, I decided to move from my base to the island. I think it's the right decision because there's lots of land which means I can make cool farms. There's a yacht and even some kind of abandoned building that can be made into a home. I finally wanted to settle down for the next days. Moreover, the 20th day is coming and it seems like the ocean will become even more infected. I made a cool pier and rebuilt the house. Also, I made a farm and now I will definitely have enough food. On the 19th day, I got from a sieve and also made an enchanting table. From this day the kraken is awakening in the ocean and now you will need to travel more carefully because meeting with a kraken can lead to the end of our survival. In general the ocean has become even greener and I think that even more monsters are here. At this rate we will definitely won't be able to survive until the hundredth day and it was necessary to figure out how to reduce the level of this infection. Look the idea sounds good. I think that we can go to the coordinates that we saw in the note because there we can save animals that are stuck in the ice. Well or were frozen, I'm not really sure. Of course, it's a long way to sail, but now I'll try to take all my best gear and go on the journey tomorrow. It's a new day and I have something interesting to show you. These two boxes as well as this stove. For a long time I didn't know where to put it, but it turns out we can put it right in our ship. As you can see, it is even highlighted where you can put them. You can also walk, sleep, sit here. In fact, even eight people can fit in this yacht. So let's put our box right here. Look at how it turned out. Let's say right, 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 right here. I also have a stove that I'll place right here. And look, we can place whatever items we want into our boxes. And our guns look kind of weird. You also have a stove in which you can cook whatever kind of food that you want. So like this, I wake up, go fishing and immediately cook it. So I'm packing my things and today we'll go on the journey. On the evening on the 21st day, I packed all my things and went on my first sailing trip. I was sailing for several days because the coordinates were really far away. Guys, how cool is this? I'm sailing in the infected endless ocean on my own yacht which I arranged by myself. We're sailing 
The engine is helping us. I even took a fishing rod with me so I can fish. I can go to sleep if I need. I can fish from my boat without any problems. Can you imagine? Awesome survival. Guys, tomorrow we should get to the place. On the morning of the 24th day, I began to see the ice, which meant that I was already there. I was worried about going through the ice on my yacht because it's not modernized enough to be able to break these blocks. But then I saw some kind of river with no ice flowing on it, so I was able to swim inside the mainland. Look, there's some bears here. And who is this? Is that a mammoth? Look, he's drinking water. Look, a fox came up to me to say hi. What a cutie. Be sure to like the video because of the fox. Well, we need to move very carefully because firstly, I can see ice disappearing right in front of my eyes. And secondly, there is a possibility that we'll not be able to pass. Look, what's that on top of the tree? Okay, let's try to park here. I can see some other house over there. So we'll park somewhere. I won't get closer just in case. I'll turn off the engine and let's see what's in there. Look how beautiful my boat is. The only thing is, I think I need to place a wall of torches here to prevent the ice from capturing our boat while we're exploring everything here. So I'll probably do it like this so the ice won't get closer to my yacht. Actually, it's very pretty. Look at this, some kind of tree house. Uh, look, I don't understand at all how I... Hmm, are you friendly? Oh, why did he start attacking me? And uh, there's some kind of ghost. So guys, oh, what's this? Some kind of doors? Uh, I'll go inside. Who is this? He just broke the ladder. Oh, wow. It's good that I was able to hide in this house from the creatures outside, and the monster that was in the house couldn't kill me. The monsters also continued to watch me outside, so I decided to look around to figure out where I am. I need to find the bandage here, or else I'll have to go to the boat, but I don't really want to. Ooh, a gangster vest! By the way, it'll definitely be better. We just had a round-the-world trip with you, and now we're in a treehouse. You never know where Zemun will be in his survivals. Yeah, I don't really like the sounds that I hear- Ow, 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 ow what happened? What in the world was that? He just broke half of the house. Ah! Look, the tree is now hanging in the air. Well, who is it to blame for this? But my beautiful yacht is still standing right there. Well, I have to fix the stairs manually now. Going upstairs, I found a telescope and didn't understand what to do with it until I found a note. A sniper rifle? Bandages and a note? So let's use the bandage first because my bleeding doesn't look very good. A sniper rifle is also excellent. Listen, trainee, your target is a furious white bear that lives in its den under a tree marked with a blue top. Make sure that it doesn't hurt anyone else. You can go back to the station once the new shift comes back. Seems like it was left to some kind of forest ranger. According to the note's text, I need to find a tree with a blue top. What this blue top should look like, I don't really under... Ah, uh -huh. yeah, I think it's this tree. Well, there should be a bear somewhere. We'll only have a look, but we won't touch it. Damn, how many of you are there? Soon it will be night. We should quickly see what's under that tree and go to sleep on our beautiful yacht. What is that? A little wolf out there or what? I love this survival so much, I don't even know where else it might take me. Seems like this is a tree with a blue top. I don't understand where, where the zombies come from. And the trap. I don't get what's going on on this island or on this mainland. Seems like it was captured by zombies. I didn't find a bear there, only a cool bow. In the meantime, the weather cleared up, the sun came out, which meant the end of the day. So I went to my boat to sleep. I spent the night of the 24th day on my yacht. In the morning, I found that the river along which we moved just froze. That's not very good, of course. And what should we do? I just got stuck in the ice. Fortunately, there was a building not far from my boat. I decided to go there and find something useful. I remind you that we got to this winter island from our warm ocean with one goal, to find frozen creatures in the ice and reduce the level of the infection of the ocean. Look, of course I expected to see a lot in my survival, but definitely not penguins. They're so sweet. I wonder what kind of building this is. What are those cameras? Base of the penguin flippers? Is this something that exists in real life? It is interesting that the rule of the penguin flippers base is to love penguins. I think that's an excellent rule. After finding some loot in this building, I found a few cartridges and a note. We love penguins, but probably some of them got into the ice. We need to check the research station. I noticed the station immediately as I left the building. It was near. Look, the water is so infected. What if I touch it? P perhaps some piranhas will bite me. So when I came to the research base, I noticed the trolls which appeared at the end of the last series that made us quite nervous. Having carefully got inside, I began to loot the building. Of course I'll take a knife. Look, there's fish swimming and some plants growing. That's it guys, now I'm completely protected from any cold. There's also bandages, actually a lot of them. There's also a shotgun, cartridges and a note. We're keeping an eye on you and oddly enough nothing is happening penguins are somewhere in the mountains i think that the infection is keeping them there i think they're talking about the mountains on the other side but it was already getting dark so i decided
decided to go back to my yacht and continue the search tomorrow. The 26th day began with me trying to break through the ice for my yacht. To be honest, I don't know at all how I'm gonna get out of here on my yacht. I'm not even talking about moving further. So I left my boat and went to the mountains to look for those penguins. And it seems I managed to find something. I ran around but there weren't a lot of mountains so I managed to do it quite quickly. Oh wow! Look what I found! I think this is exactly what we're looking for. So there is a door. It would seem that there'd be something useful, but there is absolutely nothing. But inside the cave, it was more interesting. After dealing with all the monsters, I found a lever and some ice with a penguin inside. So let's press the lever. As a result, the ice in front of me turned into water, but the penguin was saved. Can you hear that sound? Guys, the water has become less green. Look, it's even clean. Under the water, I can still feel it's not very clear, but we definitely rolled back the infection for about 10 days. There was also a submarine. I'm gonna loot it right now. I looted the submarine and returned back to my yacht. On the 27th day, I decided to get out of this winter island, which was quite difficult to do because of the ice. Only the evening of the 27th day, I was able to get out and sail back to my warm ocean. On the 28th day, the infection decreased. Actually, there was nothing to worry about, but while I was Swimming, I heard some strange sound. Good morning, guys. We are on the way now, and the most important thing to do is... What is that? Wait a minute, I can't see anything. Who is this? Who's making those sounds? I don't see anyone. That's strange. I couldn't explain how they appeared. I assume it was a kraken, but where did it come from if the infection has decreased? Actually, I was pretty scared, but I still managed to get back home. And then new surprises were awaiting. When I sailed to my island, I noticed that everything had changed around. New rocks and a shipwreck appeared. For a sec, I even thought that maybe this isn't my island. Oh, oh my god, I almost collided with a reef. Oh, oh my god, these rocks, they're sticking out of the sea. Okay guys, I don't know, but I think we definitely need to park and understand what's going on here. As I realized later, the map is constantly changing and apparently, based on the fact that we lowered the infection for the first time, the map has been updated and new activities have appeared that we can investigate. Big thanks to my team for that. Look, it seems it's a sunken part of a ship. And another one, look, there are some corals. Where did they come from? Of course, I don't know guys, but apparently this is a pirate ship. Well, we'll have to go there tomorrow. Having laid out all my resources in the morning of the 29th day, Having harvested and put the farm in order a little, my goal was to explore that mysterious ship. But before we go to that very ship, I would like to show you my house, because it seems you haven't seen it yet. So, I haven't moved the furnaces yet. I don't even have a door. Well, even though I only have a little, I still have a big storage unit. And here I have everything sorted out. I don't have all the resources here, because we have some over there. There is my yacht, and all the boxes in it are full. I didn't have time to sort it out. And of course, I changed the location of my farm. Now it's over here. It looks somewhat better. In the near future, I also want to make a path here and rearrange the island a little bit because I don't want to live like Robinson Crusoe. We were all intelligent people, right? Despite the fact that 29 days of survival have passed, this raft still doesn't lose its relevance. Am I right, Duck? And there was definitely something to expect because there were some infected monsters on this ship. So guys, I don't know what kind of creatures they are, but I don't like them at all. Okay, let's just try. Maybe they're friendly, which of course I doubt. Oh, uh, no, wait. They're throwing something at me. As I understand, these are some basic monsters and actually there was nothing dangerous about them, but I still had to strain myself. When I got on the ship, I was looking for some clues, because this shipwreck looks way too cool to just be a place full of basic loot. A spiral's amulet and a book with a quill. Let's read it. We are about to find an ancient civilization that foreshadowed an infected apocalypse. For 10 years, I, Captain Spyro, has been exploring the ocean to find what's hidden from billions of people on Earth. The weather is getting worse. I hope this won't be my last letter. We're on our way to the coordinates minus 8901 to 6400. According to all the finds that have been made, it is assumed that there must be either a clue or already the most ancient civilization right there. Captain Spyro. My brain is just overflowing with too much information. It seems that we have hit the plot trail. These rocks around my island appeared for a reason. Nevertheless, I didn't want to go to the coordinates at the moment. There was still a huge ocean around that could be explored. And also, I would like to do my own work on the house and prepare for the journey more carefully. The 30th day has come, and this means that the infection is picking up steam. Look at the water. It's it's very green, and the reason behind it is that the 30th day has come. And moreover, something has happened to the sky too. Look, some dark spots appeared. Am I wrong, or has it not been like this in the past? All the water looks green. Oh, what is this? Right near the shore, I saw an airdrop. I don't know where it came from, but most likely it randomly falls on the map. Guys, I found some new stuff. Oh wait, it's an airdrop, right? C can I open it? Bandages from infection, and some ammo too. Cool. Actually, I had some plans for today. I wanted to visit two locations that were near me which as I recall have recently appeared. The first location is the bow, and the second is the back of the ship. Judging by what I can see, the sky is 
really changed. Look, it's so dark. I hope it's not a harbinger of trouble. All right, now I want to patch up the sunken ship and collect useful resources. And I can see a lot of boxes over here. Drop the anchor. Yes, there were a lot of boxes and the loot in them was also worthy. I even found fruit salad. I'd actually like to eat in real life right now. But I had to make the video, so I went on. But completely forgot to take my flippers and an underwater mask. I went to the very depths of the ship and unfortunately I didn't find anything there. Then I decided to go to the second location. This is the ship's back. Yes, you heard it right. I think that's what it is. Let's try to break through here. I see some light. Ooh, look, there's a chest in there. Reinforced diving mask. Okay, I have a regular one at home, of course. It'll be necessary to test this one as it's probably much better. And there's nothing else in here. Wait, the ship sailed away without me. Hey, did I forget to turn off the engine or what? Uh, let's drift past these water lilies, guys. Uh, careful. Uh, great. Perfect parking. Let me remind you that there's no caves generated in our survival. So it is necessary to extract resources with the same sieve that we used in the first episode. Everything's the same. But the only thing is that in the future, I'll be able to automate it all with the help of a water mill. But now I'm far from it. On the 32nd day, I decided to work on the appearance of my island. That's what I did. And that's how it looks now. On the 33rd day, I decided to work on my home as well. I changed the roof and actually I did a lot of things. Okay, guys, honestly, I couldn't even imagine that it would look that nice. First of all, we have this area with chairs and tables. I can sit there or turn the chair and watch the sunset. The house is fully equipped with these cool lamps. I added a lot of windows, so it's much brighter on the inside than it used to be before. I also planted a tree. Well, it looks lively and more cozy. A small lantern on top of my house, of course. Well, a little foliage for beauty, again, to create comfort. Because there were just some stone walls before that. Apart from that, on the 34th day, some aggressive monsters began to appear again. Obviously, this is due to the infection. Although the sharks were biting me pretty much the whole day, I was trying to get some sand for the windows. It's the 35th day, and today I decided to go on a little trip around the neighborhood. I found a small wreckage, containers that were just floating in the ocean, as well as something huge and incredibly interesting. This is a giant abandoned oil platform. Guys, look what I found. This is a huge oil platform, or as they call it, an oil rig. Okay, I see a ladder. The difficulties began as soon as I swam up to it. I was immediately attacked by an infected mutant at some point. I only have four hearts left. Oh my god, guys, look. Some pterodactyls attacked me. Let's have a snack right now, quick. So we need to climb up, and I feel that there's still a lot of monsters. So come on, come on, come on, let's climb. The sounds of mutants were coming from everywhere, and I was really scared because I understood that there were monsters that could end our survival with just one blow. I was restoring my HP and kept trying to climb up. Oh my god, look at these spiders. One by one, guys. Don't come close to me. Oh my god, there's so many monsters. Look at this one. It even has a nickname over its head. Look, just a little more. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So, these are generated locations that my team has prepared. Different types and forms may appear on the map, but in fact, this is an oil rig, and there should be a lot of useful resources on it. So I didn't waste any time and immediately began to explore it. Okay, there's a door here. I hope there won't be any monsters. Yep, no one. It's some kind of office room. Oh, look, there's a hole. It would be nice to make a base here, by the way, but I prefer it on the island. There was a lot of different rooms, almost like a maze. I found a huge number of cool things in this maze. Some kind of gravity cannon, a hazmat suit, and a lot more stuff like that. Okay, I don't see any monsters from here. We can also check that out later. Ah, I broke my leg again right before the jump. Okay, let's go. But if I fell into the water, nothing would happen. I just have to climb up again. Okay, I broke my leg again. Oh, come on. This is a pretty good location, you know. While I was looking for some loot, I didn't notice that the sun already went below the horizon. The night has already come, guys. So we need to get out of here right away. I have a full inventory of resources. But it'll be nice to return here next time and sort it all out. And here's my yacht. Jump! And now let's get out of here before a fish grabs me by my leg. It's the 36th day. One of the things I brought home from this very oil rig was obsidian, which I forgot to mention. Everything was coming together because I had to make a portal to the nether, so why not? 17 obsidian! See? I think I'll make the portal somewhere here. After making the portal, I decided to visit the nether and see what new things were there. And in fact, there were new monsters that were harmless until you touched them. In addition, I also found a fortress and it was amazing news. I don't think I've ever found the nether fortress on the first day when going to the nether. I think luck is on our side. I found a few blaze spawners and chests with some nice loot. I even found diamonds as well as nether ward. I collected it all and decided to go home because the nether is cool and all but the 40th day is coming soon. The infection is getting stronger and it was necessary to prepare for it. After all, we don't even know what might happen later. On the 37th day, I remembered about the pirate's note that we left on the abandoned ship. I think it's time to look for that abandoned civilization and go to the very coordinates mentioned in the note. I hope we could defeat the infection or at least reduce its level. I have a very 
very long and treacherous journey ahead of me. So I loaded my boat, my backpack, as well as my inventory. It took quite a long time to get there, but on the 38th day, I finally reached that place. But this wasn't exactly what I expected to see. We had to explore the island of horrors. Guys, I see some sort of island right in our way. I can't believe that the ancient civilization is here. It seems no one lives here. Okay, let's park right here. Something is telling me this is not the civilization that we're looking for. At the time, I didn't know what challenges were waiting for me. And so far, I decided to walk around and explore this huge piece of scorched land. I've seen a huge number of mobs that I haven't met before. Some were aggressive and some were fine. And for the time being, everything was alright until I saw an old shabby house. Oh wow, there's a chest. G gotcha. I, I mean, w was that a trap? The Hotel of Fear is a location that I could not foresee at all. As it turns out, I will need to fight with my fears and only after defeating all of them, I'll be able to move on. And it won't be as simple as it sounds. Can anyone tell me what just happened? I think I fell into some kind of trap. Surprisingly, it was impossible to get out of here. I just couldn't break the blocks with my pickaxe. All the nightmares are free. The hotel is abandoned. Actually, I, I can see that. So let's go here to the reception. Mm, a note. The hotel was created so that people could overcome their fears. The civilization doesn't let anyone in. They must understand that you are ready. I realize we didn't find a civilization, but we found something that's linked with it. As a result, there were three branches of fear in this hotel, and the task being is that we have to get through them. The first is darkness. The second is hide, and the third is personal fears. Most likely the team knows about some of my fears and stuffed them all in there. In any case, I have to find out. So there are three doors. It doesn't seem to be that terrible. Okay, three doors. As I understand it, I need to choose one. Okay, let's start with the darkness. Okay guys, I appeared in total darkness. Look, despite the fact that I have my torch in my hands, I can't see anything except for that dot in the middle. Look, I'm in complete darkness. All I have is this dot which I can follow. Oh, oh, another one. It turned out that it was a maze and as you already understood, it's in complete darkness. It was quite difficult to get through it and the only way is to follow these white dots. Ah, uh, ah, uh, what just jumped at me? Uh, okay, I will move very carefully. Oh, I see a wall guys, I see a wall. I hope that this is the way out, I just have to break it. Come on, oh, I'm out! When I came out, the first door opened, and there I noticed a black heart. I decided to go to the second fear. It was height. We are all afraid of heights, especially me. As you may have noticed, I appeared in a parkour room, and now we'll try to pass it. There is some kind of small huggy wuggy down there. Oh yeah, and I'm really afraid of heights, as I think many of you are too. So I'll try to just jump and pass it without any mistakes. I shouldn't make any mistakes. Okay. Let's go, uh, carefully. I feel like we need to jump on those slime blocks and then jump on those pistons over there. It's not an easy task, but I'll try. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my God. It was really hard to pass this parkour. It was a very stressful situation because it was impossible to break blocks and put them here. So we only had one chance for many elements of parkour. After passing it, I found a chest with a bow and arrow and it's going to be quite handy in the future. Okay guys, I'll only have one try, just one arrow. I can't break these blocks. It's impossible. So if I don't hit this button right now, then consider the survival to be over because there is no way back. The main thing is to get there. Oh, okay, let's run. Let's run. Come on. Woo! Okay, guys, it's done. The second door opened, and there I saw a glider. The last task is awaiting for us. These are personal fears, something that is directly related to me. Personal fears. Well, guys, it's time to face my fears. Oh, oh my god, spiders. I'm very afraid of spiders. I'm very afraid of spiders. Get away from me. I'm done. I have passed the last task. The third door opened for me, where I found an awesome sword. The most important thing is the note. You have proved that you can visit the civilization and the forgotten mysterious island of the claw, which is waiting for you. Here are the coordinates. And to get out of here, jump back into the water. Yeah, let's get out of here because I don't feel too comfy in here. I got out only on the 40th day. And as you understand, on this day, the infection intensified. Well, I still had no idea to what extent. On the 41st day, I returned home. The journey was worrying due to the colors that I was seeing. In addition, these bushes began to appear all around. Two of them appeared near my house, and one was generated right in a rock, which almost cut through the whole thing. Yes, guys, I'm home, finally. Look how acidic everything is. Okay, I've already had survivals in an infection, but I've never been this terrified. Let's collect wheat, and then the food is already running out. Well, my plans are now huge. I want to make an automatic farm for mining ores and minerals. I guess this mod allows 
allows you to do it. Let's see if it's really possible. Having planted all the weeds, I got to work. For auto farm, we need a lot of tub wheels, water, of course, an auto filter and a sieve to make the iron quickly, then gold, diamonds and other resources. And of course, we'll still need hoppers. Okay guys, it wasn't easy to build, but to be honest, I still don't know how it works. So I took some gravel and I'll test it in front of you. Well, this is how the mill works, so our funnels are here and here's a sieve. If I just load gravel here, it should appear over there. Stop. Where is it going? S stop. Something is not working right, I think. Look, guys, the whole farm is working now. To be honest, it was very difficult to make. There is such a mechanism. I had to attach it three times. Now, I just need to load it with as much sand and gravel as possible. And we'll have a huge amount of resources. Yes, the ocean was infected, but I still decided to explore it and found some nice ruins with new resources. Taking into account that there is a limited number of dungeons at this location, this pleased me. On the 43rd day, I decided to replenish the supplies of wood. So I went to my first house. I cut down all the trees there and planted new saplings. The whole 44th day, I was preparing for the trip again. And this time, I don't even know what to take with me. At the same time, I designed the bedroom in my house. Now it looks nice. But on the 45th day, I was already on my way. And this time, I definitely intended to find the civilization, the island of the claw. Here is a jungle surrounded by huge peaks. And most likely, the civilization is hiding right behind them. But this could be some kind of test again. And the civilization might be really far away. This might be the biggest island I've been on in all of my survivals. Look, there's a sign. Hello, Zeman. This is your team. Everything is clear, so I'm definitely where I'm supposed to be. We will tell you about the incident on this island, which you will have to figure out. Help this island take back what was stolen from it in the past. If you fail, you'll be stuck here forever. Good luck. Not far from the shore, I saw a red flag. Apparently, this is a clue where I should go. So, I went there along the path. Wow, look at the ruins here. They're probably many thousands of years old. By the way, there is no way back. Think this through, please. Yeah, I did. You sure? Of course. You can't stop, huh? I tried. I see some ruins ahead, and look, some skeletons killed a parrot! What the hell? The first thing I did is I reached the ruins, and I still didn't know if I was in the right place. But all the mists were dispelled by the one note that I found. Only a true hero will be able to find the heirloom. I feel like I'm on the right track. There was a lot of loot, as well as notes, so it's pretty pleased, because at the beginning of survival, we had nothing at all except just one block. Our scouts brought strange devices. Let's put them in our pyramid. Okay, some weird skeletons immediately ran at me. Yeah, I I remember, it was about a pyramid. And I guess I found it by going to this ancient temple and meeting some ancient ponies that bit quite hard. I found a lot of useful things there, but I couldn't find what the note said. Oh wow, it's already night. That's not good at all. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, wow. It was an abandoned submarine right in the cliff. It looked breathtaking. The scale of the construction was amazing, but it was already evening, so I had to find a place where I could spend the night. And tomorrow, I'll search that place. Well, guys, I decided to build a small treehouse because there's monsters right below me. This submarine looks so mystical from here. It's right on the edge. We'll definitely go there tomorrow. Good morning, guys. How epic is that? Okay, let's make a raft. We will sail slowly. I see a red flag there. I want to sail here again. There's probably a lot of activity and we couldn't explore everything. So there's nothing here. Let's just follow the red flag. I think that's the best option. Hmm. I guess the parkour that we passed on the island of fear wasn't for nothing. I had to do my best to pass this parkour and climb up to the submarine because these jumps weren't as easy as it may seem. At least it wasn't that high up, but I still broke my leg. Thank God I had cast. Okay, I went through the first part of parkour and there's more. So I finally passed the parkour. You know, it wasn't that easy. Guys, I see another red flag and we're getting closer to the submarine. Guys, I want you to pay attention to how beautiful this map is. I jumped from stone to stone across the river to the other side and found an interesting chest. Reward if you didn't cheat and reward if you cheated. So we didn't place any blocks and we didn't go up the river. So let's take the diamond. Wow, look at how beautiful this place looks. Across the lilies, hip, hop, hip. I'm finally inside, but there's no one here. Only my torches will be here now, and a lot of stuff. Oh, by the way, there's a lamp with a chest. Coal, all sorts of resources, and a note to Commander Constantine. Commander, a terrible storm is starting. I haven't seen such a storm in my entire life. Let's leave something on this island and not take it on board. Commander, a huge tornado has formed on the horizon. We need to dive right now. If we don't make it in time, we can run aground. I hope he didn't take something on board. Commander, there is a problem in 
the right compartment. The back section went up. The screws are in the sky. We can't get away from the tornado. We are throwing s s something into the water. Now that's the plot. It's so mystic. I like it. Then, the whole 46th day, I was trying to find something useful and interesting on the submarine. There were no more notes, but I managed to find a bunch of cool loot. Guys, look, we're just in the submarine right now. And there's probably like a hundred meter drop right below us. Well, we got all the loot in the submarine and the night is coming. We spent the whole day here to do everything we planned. Oh, I see another red flag. And I think that we need to go this way or we have to sail. We need to make another raft. Our adventure continued. I sailed on the raft all night and probably in the morning of the 47th day as well until I found a small abandoned pier. Look at that. Okay, it's worth parking here. There was a cave, so I decided to look into it. Do you know where I got to that very ancient civilization? Honestly guys, I'm shocked. We finally found it. Perhaps this place will help us defeat the infection. Look at this temple. There are two huge bridges. This is the most epic and badass place I've ever seen in all of my survivals. Now the main problem is how I'm gonna get there. I chose a very dangerous way to get there. I was building a bridge over the abyss. Okay guys, we got there. That's good. Still, I can't believe that I'm actually here right now. First of all, I think we'll go to the city. For sure there must be something. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's filled with content. How cool is this guys? A chest. An enchanted golden apple. Nice. Here we have the first note. Let's read it. The nearest pond keeps secrets. So, the nearest pond keeps secrets. I'm clueless right now. As you understand, the civilization was ancient and abandoned. All I could rely on was the notes that were left. And I saw a huge number of them. I realized that I had to put it all together and solve a riddle that shows where a relic is located. Thanks to which we will defeat the infection. It's already evening. I found seven notes. Let me now tell you what I understood from them. I realized that there once was a relic that was stolen after the countdown to the beginning of the infection started. This relic was stolen on the submarine that eventually crashed. The relic, as I remember, was thrown overboard into the water and now nobody knows where it is. But from some notes, it is clear that something weird and abnormal is happening in the river. You know, two notes say this. So, I should look in the water. It's now evening, so I'm going to go to a house to spend the night there and tomorrow I'll think about what I can do with it. It's the 50th day soon and I really need to hurry up. The 48th day, morning. The atmosphere was as if the infection was about to defeat us. Well guys, good morning. I noticed corals right there. Of course, they can be here for no reason, but on the other hand, as the survival shows, corals appear for a reason. Now I'm gonna go down carefully. By the way, in the city I found a complete diving set. Many of you noticed that this is a suit from the game Subnautica. By the way, this is one of my favorite survival games, so it's doubly nice. I won't waste time, so let's jump into the water. For the first two minutes, I didn't see anything interesting, or if it was just another normal lake. Everything changed when I realized that this lake is very deep and I saw a chest at the bottom. Okay guys, I found something. Look, the sky is turning red. It's time to dive guys. Okay, I see the chest and right now the most important task is to get to it. A note, a sword from the bottom of the seas, iron and a diamond. The sword from the bottom of the seas. Well, I don't know what else to say about it. I kept surfacing and diving. There wasn't much oxygen even with a full diver suit. All in all, I found what I've been looking for for so long. Guys, look what I found. It's a bathyscape. Look at that. We're getting into it. There's oxygen and it's working. This is the same bathyscape as the one from Subnautica. Thus, exploration went five times as fast, which was very important to us. I also found a water pocket. I found a water pocket. Look, there's some kind of flying skulls. Okay, there's a totem, some resources and a note. Return the relic to the temple immediately. Otherwise, the heavens will be furious. I contemplated for a long time and I realized that there was both flint and an iron ingot in the chests, which I allowed me to make a flint and steel that I can use on the block in the middle because there was definitely netherite in it. Oh my god, I'm alive. That's what matters. Look, I have a ghostly amulet. Meanwhile, the paint thickened on the surface. I quickly surfaced and I realized that I had to run to the temple that is in the middle of the civilization. Okay, guys, I'm sure we should get there right now. There's lightning strikes everywhere. Some monsters are shooting at me all the time. Look at the sky. Oh my god, this color. Look, we should probably go there. We should probably go there. Come on, faster, faster. I think I just need to throw it right here. Oh shit! Uh, 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 what? But, but how? 
Ow! My disappointment at the end of my survival was for nothing, because in a few seconds I saw an inscription. Teleport? It was not like what you usually see when you die in hardcore, and as it turned out, I didn't die at all, but ended up at the very heart of the island, and I had no idea how to get out of there. I had a huge amount of plans, I wanted to take my boat, Bathy's cave, and go on my favorite island. Moreover, in this episode, an insane project waits us to build it. But first, let's find a way out of here. I have nothing to say. What the hell is going on here? And where am I? My my stuff is all gone. The first person I met was Innkeeper Joe. It was even possible to talk to him. Greetings, O Lost Soul. What wind brought you down here? Tell me your name. My name is Zeman, and only one thing I want to know is what's going on down here. Nice to meet you, Zeman. Let me tell you what happened here. The island called for us for salvation from the infection. And when you return the amulet to its place, you thereby agree to help. And now you're in the heart of the island. And the only way out of here is to defeat the infection that has settled in the core of the island. But this can only be done with a cleansing sword, which we'll have to find in the depths of the heart. So that is what you call the core of the island. I see. We somehow need to figure out a way to defeat it. While I was trying to get out of the island, the 50th day arrived. And this meant that the infection had spread across the ocean even more. All the islands began to gradually become infected. Even our base island was corrupted. Monsters began to appear of huge size, while the spawn rate of krakens increased tenfold. And now it was simply impossible to sail across the sea without meeting them. Fighting with dozens of krakens in the endless ocean will 100% lead to the end of our survival. But while I was under the island, I had no idea about that. Later, I realized how quickly this level of the infection could end our game. In the meantime, I continued to explore the location. You'll never guess who I found. Remember how in the last episode we found notes about Captain Sparrow? He was here, alive and well, in all his glory. I even talked to him. This is the same captain whose notes we saw in the last episode. Episode. He told me about a sword. If I can find it, I can strike the core with lightning and reduce the level of the infection. And then, finally, get out of here. Here is the sword, I guess. Okay, I feel like we need to do some parkour. Finally getting to the sword and using it. Push, push, push. Lightning Lord, whoa. I was teleported back to the island. Luckily for me, the infection rate has dropped significantly, but it still left a lot to be desired. Okay, guys, look around. Of course, the infection exists. How can we play without it? But the redness is all gone, and it feels like we can continue to survive. Yeah, of course, the water also remains green, and it is clear that it will become even greener in the future. But wait, why is there some kind of ship over there? I'm pretty sure that there wasn't any ship before. The map update brought a lot of new features, which you will learn about throughout the course of the video. Is that a shark? We have to be very careful. Captain Sparrow? Captain Sparrow thanked me for my help and told me about the fishermen that I can meet in the ocean. The whole speech was about the generations of dungeons, the so-called fishermen's shops, which will appear on our map and with whom we can bargain. Moreover, there is a 4% chance that we'll be able to find plot notes which will help us continue the story and find out where the infection came from. Some sharks are still attacking me for some reason. Okay, where's my bathy scape? Yes, great, let's get out of here right now. My first idea is to drag at home. Yeah, the Yad mod has a cable with which he can tie other vehicles to it, which is what I actually wanted to do. What a giant lap I had to do to get to my Yad. So, guys, everything is stuffed and I think that we need to hitch our if you can say Baffy's cave to our Yad and sail away from here. That's all. It's easy, guys. Just hitch it up and go. Now we have a Baffy's cave and we'll take it home. Let's go! I got to my island without any problems, but I wasn't ready to see what happened. Due to the fact that in recent days the infection was quite strong, the island turned out to be slightly infected. So, the next day, I immediately began to remove the infected blocks and try to restore the appearance of the island. Am I shocked? Of course! I just went for a few days and look what happened here. I'm afraid to imagine what would have happened if the infection had gone even further. My whole green island would turn into a waste dump. I don't even have a slight idea what to do, so we'll just continue to remove these infected blocks. The next day, the island has already begun to regreen. After unloading the yacht and sorting my things, I decided to go on expedition in order to find new dungeons or those that I had not noticed before. Onward to new adventures. I would like to find some interesting dungeons. By the way, you can also find those fishermen that Captain Spyro told us about. Let's see what we can find today. There, I see something. It's not like the pebbles that float around us. Okay, here's something interesting. Let's stop the ship a little further. A Kraken or even a Megalodon may be waiting for us there. It turned out that these were the remains of some huge sea creature and there were even monsters on it. It is not yet clear what it is, but perhaps these are the remains of some huge shark. Let's go check. I got closer and now I see these cockroaches. More like some kind of a weird crocodiles? Either amphibians or crocodiles or some kind of spongebobs. This makes no sense. Despite their advantage in numbers and intimidating appearance, I got rid of them pretty quickly. Well, oof. 
Okay, I thought it would be difficult. Underwater, I realized that these were not just remains. This is a whole skeleton of an unknown giant monster. The good news is, first of all, iron ore, which is scarce in this survival. And here, I'm afraid to find out what it is. It seemed to be his head, guys. It really looks like his head. Look, he has diamonds instead of teeth. So this is a good find. Another piece of iron? Okay. Ooh, chest. Why, why is it empty? Here is another box. Well, let's see what's in there. A book and an infection. Infected drop. This is interesting. There are rumors that somewhere there are fishermen selling magical items that can be used to turn any building into a ship. I wonder if this is true. This is the most interesting thing I've found all day. Let's keep going. Continuing to explore the location, I found more gold and a couple of boxes with a screwdriver and some kind of cat mask. Tell me, tell me, I look so much better. It suits me, doesn't it? It was getting late, so I decided to go home. Most of all, I wanted to understand what was said back then. What is the thing? that the fishermen sell that can turn your building into a ship. I definitely needed to go find them. The next day, I began harvesting the farm. Have you ever seen a nine cat harvesting wheat? I didn't see either. After that, I went back to the ocean. My task for today was to still find those fishermen. As I understand, they spawn constantly, and you won't believe it. I found him. Look what I found. I think this is similar to what I was looking for. There is a person in there, most likely a fisherman, merchant. Look, sea merchant. By the way, he spawned not that far away from my starting location. Look. So what can you tell me? He has a small assortment, but look what he has. Some weird blocks. I haven't seen these before. Some manuscript and a note. Well, it's obvious that we need to look for those fairy drops. Let's go. The following days were very eventful. In a few days, I managed to find a lot of loot and a huge number of dungeons, which contained a lot of items, as well as currencies in the form of infected drops, which we will need for our trade. Look, there are signs on some kind of pebble, and next to it is a strange transparent ship. I didn't know yet that there was a minefield under me, and around a cemetery of forgotten ships. There really is a lot of ships here. Chest. Great. Oh, wow. Look, what is this? If we knew what it is, we don't know what it is. What is it? It was super interesting to explore these transparent ships. When I got closer, I didn't see any monsters, which allowed me to safely climb aboard. Who would have thought I'm inside a ghost ship? Oh, I can't believe it. Big nose. And you, you, who locked you in here? How much loot do you have here? Look, I just don't believe it. What? How many diamonds are there? Ten diamonds in one barrel? Ooh, there's a bell. I can ring it. At the top, there was the last chest. We just had an impossible amount of loot. I didn't stop there and went on scouting the nearest ships. We need to go out more often and look for them. On the 55th day, I found an island with houses and you have no idea how much more loot was in there. More than ever in this survival. We have a new location, guys. I don't know what it is yet, but there's definitely buildings on this island. Let's go! Take it easy, easy, I said easy, and here we are. Having successfully parked, I began to look for all sorts of interesting things. I didn't find any quest or any plot notes, but there were definitely plenty of resources, especially guns. You have no idea how much I love this survival. It would seem like an endless ocean and nothing around. But look how many cool locations we have already found, and how many more will be ahead. Awesome survival, one of my favorites. I love it when I find so many meds and such a cool looking helmet. I I also found crates that drop meds, ammo, and cannons. And of course, I was able to find those infected drops. Now this is what I call loot. Bearing in mind that the ocean is likely to become so infected soon that there will be only monsters around. I think that this island was found in time. The evening came. On the next 56th and 57th day, I still explored a huge number of small locations. This allowed me to collect so many drops that I went to the merchants and was going to buy almost everything they had. Hooray, friends! We finally came to spend our infected drops. Let's Let's see what they can offer to us. So, well, I'll buy this note first. Okay, let's go. This note is a hint. You can buy items and use them to create your own buildings, which will be made of blocks that will float. This will allow you to travel long distances. Good luck, Zeman. Everything seems to match. That's exactly what we were told at the beginning of the episode, remember? And so, as I understand it, we need these blocks. Let's buy another manuscript. There's coordinates on the manuscript. That's very strange, because these coordinates are the same as those of my island. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, good. So it turns out we can buy these items here. Uh 
it. Congrats to us. We spent all our money, but we bought all the items he had. There seems to be nothing left. We can find other merchants and maybe they'll have something different because this random generation looks set up. Okay, it's already evening. We need to get home as soon as possible. Morning of the 59th day. The weather had been calm since morning. I even approved the farm a little and made the second floor. The water is infected. The wheat will be radioactive. I sorted through all the resources that I found in my travels. The coordinates on the manuscript that we bought pointed exactly to my island. I decided to dig a little to this point and found a chest there. What? And there was a note in the chest. Lost time machine. This is your chance to survive. Once upon a time, there was no infection at all. If you can find the reason why it started, you can lower the infection. The time machine is lost in the sunken city. And the city is 15,000 blocks away? Are you kidding me? Asking my team here, why is everything so difficult? That's when I realized that the time had come. It's time to build the biggest project of the survival. The construction of my own liner. A ship that will have everything you want. I'll make my own farm there. So warehouses, even some bedrooms. And most importantly, with the help of the blocks that we bought from the merchants, we'll be able to revive it and make it completely floating. But on the 60th day, my plans were interrupted by an increase in the level of the infection. New monsters began to appear, which perhaps sometimes even look like bosses. And most importantly, my island began to get infected. At the moment, I already understood the inevitability of my situation. The liner had to be built as quickly as possible. What is this? God, it's day 60. I now understand what is happening. Wow, there's a huge flower there. Look. My God, what kind of monster is this? More and more are coming. Ah, carefully. So third, third, third chainsaw work. Ah, ah. 4 HP. So, okay, they can't get into the house yet. It's good. There's another one. Take a look. And another one is running here. We took care of the flower. Excellent. There are still these mutants left. Ah, ah, three and a half HP. These are still running at me. Look, how many of them are spawning here? When will they stop spawning? This flower is running at me. Uh, reload, reload. In this survival, it was the biggest invasion of mutants, especially on our base, but we coped with it. On the morning of the 61st day, I have finally began to build the frame of our liner. It was difficult to decide on the size. If we make it too big, we will never finish it. And if we make it too small, then there won't be much use for it. I also dug a lot of resources that day, ranging from cobblestone to wood, which I had just mined on our starting location where I had the tree farm. At the end of our first day of construction, I got something like this. And so here is the nose of our ship. I thought it'd be cool to make just a a dumb little face so that all these mutants and monsters are afraid of us and our liner. Well, actually, that's all. Today, I was extracting a lot of resources, so I didn't have time to do a lot. So, it looks like this. On the 62nd day, I continued to build my liner. First of all, I prepared new blocks and began to build walls. You just can't imagine what a huge amount of resources, time, and nerves it takes to do it all correctly, especially when cockroaches get in the way. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. When I woke up on the morning of the 63rd day, I noticed the following. The island was already more than 15% infected and all my crops stopped growing. Look at how the dirt blocks are changing. We've run out of wheat on the farm. Something grew there and now there is nothing else. I wonder what will happen when everything in this world becomes infected. To be honest, I don't want to check. Also, new monsters on the island began to spawn more often. I checked the farm. Still, wheat can be grown. Just with some chance it may disappear. The construction of the ship did not stop for a second. I knew I need to hurry, so I sped up. On the 64th day, a complete complete picture began to form. I added green areas and borders. Also, you can notice the side of the farm where I try to grow all sorts of crops. Okay, I'm very tired of building this ship, but I can already show you something. Here, I want to make my ordinary house. Yes, the house right on the liner. From above, we'll have such a terrace. Maybe I'll make a farm later here, but for now, I just like the plants. The feed, you can see what we have in the distance. And yes, there's my yacht. I probably should have brought her here. Here, we will definitely have a farm. Perhaps even several tiers and on the other side as well. And if we go down here, then here we have a huge room for swimming pools, warehouses, concert halls, and everything you want to imagine. But we'll probably furnish it later. On the 65th day, I decided to go after my yacht and at the same time swim a little around the area. I stumbled upon a fortress on the water, which I had never seen before. Right on the course, guys. We have an unknown fortress. I noticed it and decided to go home to pick up guns for myself, just in case. Because something seems to me that I won't get there just like that. Nice, we managed to park. Ouch, who's shooting at me? What are these, some bandits here? I see it looks like we attacked the bandit camp. Good evening, how are you doing? I have to be careful because they do quite decent damage. There are a lot of them here, I must say. I came in peace then. Oh no, those pesky minotaurs. What the hell did you forget here? I, I, reload, reload. Wow, yes, 
So there's a lot of you here. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We need to survive another 100 days, guys. So these boxes, unfortunately, do not open. But the only thing is, there are watermelons. Look, and pumpkins. Let's take them carefully. You know, it's hard to grow food these days. I regularly lose my wheat crops. So what do we have here? Let's be careful. Sir Pancake? Who are you? No, I, of course, meant different things in my survival. But Sir Pancake is, of course, amazing. So can you at least talk to him? Hi, Zeman. I am Sir Pancake, your new friend. Help me get out of here. You need to find the key. Do it quick. Um, okay. Maybe we can find the key on one of those floors. Look at the apocalyptic world. It seems so beautiful, but I understand that the infection will become even stronger. Ooh, chest. Save Sir Pancake. Book and quilt. I am Sir Pancake. A cookie that has gained intelligence. <laughs> well, it's still very hard to figure out who we found, but we got the key, so let's go release him or something. What took you so long, dude? Okay, nice to meet you. If subscribers want to see me again in your survival, I will appear. And good Good luck to you in your survival. Take some cookies. What? Five stacks of cookies? Now let's survive on cookies. There seems to be nothing more interesting here. On the 66th day, I was finishing my liner, but in the evening and throughout the night I carried things, since my island was already almost completely infected. As you can see, my liner is ready. He looks just great. Of course, we're still going to finish it. Come on, I'll show you what we actually have there. Actually, I completed such a house right on my liner. The house is empty, but I have 16 huge chests. They fit all my things, and there's still room for more. There's a ladder here that takes us up to the bed where we can sleep, even while the liner is sailing. Well, and most importantly, so far kind of schematically made, a staircase that leads us up to the place from where we can control this boat. We'll put the passenger seat and steering wheel like this. We open the menu, press this key. Incredible! Our liner consists of 2,633 blocks. And after that, press the mount ship button. As you guys can see, we can swim! At at the very beginning of survival, we were on a raft, then we moved on to a small boat, later we found a yacht and even a bathy's cave. And now, we have built a huge liner on our own, on which in the future, we can put everything we want. It's time to leave the island. It became more and more infected, and the coordinates of the next place where I had to move were very far away, and such a distance could not be overcome on a small yacht. With the help of a special item, I collected the yacht and the bathy's cave into my inventory, and boarding my giant liner, saying goodbye to the island, I set off. Now guys, we have a huge liner, which from now on is our home. I think this survival can be divided into two parts, what was before this moment and after. We set off from our home on a huge journey, which contains a huge number of dangers and secrets, and no one knows what the next day will bring. The adventure started right away. At night, I heard a huge amount of krakens, and I really didn't want to face them. Okay, I don't like this at all. Can you hear it? This is actually some kind of madness. If a kraken touches my ship, I'll most likely get hurt. I don't even see him. It was very stressful, but everything seemed to work out, practically. What can I say, guys? It's morning, and I noticed this here. For you to understand, it seems that the Kraken can break our building, so right now I'll fix it. To be honest, I wouldn't really want to meet him face to face. But as they say, I had to. On the 69th day, I had to face the Kraken. As my team told me, ordinary guns do not work against them, and I had to craft some unique ones. Underwater, it was hard enough to see anything, so I recorded everything from the side. In general, I can say that the battle was difficult, but I was able to defeat him surprisingly quickly. The battle with the Kraken was difficult, but we need to go further. Tomorrow, we must reach the desired coordinates. On day 70, I got to the point and decided to launch the yacht. Because if there's some kind of danger and it completely destroys my liner with all of our resources, then survival will most likely end. What was strange was that on day 70, nothing visually changed. The sky remained the same color and the ocean too. On the same day on my small yacht, I got to a specific point. What I found will shock you. As a result, friends, I arrived at these coordinates and there is such a spire. I've basically gathered all the bare minimum resources that I might need. So let's jump into the bathy cave right now and see what's in there. My god, this is something huge. This is... Th is this an underwater city or something? Let's get to the chest. So here's some night vision potions. I still find it difficult to understand, but it seems that there's an underwater city. Okay, let's slowly go down. The deeper we go down, the darker everything's gonna be. So let's drink night vision potions. Oh, it looks much better now. Just think about how big this map is. I don't know if I can get around everything here in 100 days, especially an underwater city. Okay, guys, I'm being attacked by a monster. Some very creepy monster. Never mind. 
mind. Take a look. Guys, this is kind of creepy. Look, there's lots of them and he almost killed me. Obviously, at this depth of the infected ocean, the monsters were much more ferocious and there were species that I had never met before. On the 71st day, I continued to explore the city and there were the first steps. I saw a door and apparently it was possible to go in there. Okay, so for now, I left my bathyscape here and I'll go in this door. So, I want to see what's in here. That's all we need to break for now. As quickly as possible. Look, this is some kind of room. Okay, there must be some useful loot here. So, there's some parkour going on here. Boxes. Boxes are good. I would like to find some notes, to be honest, to understand what's happening here. There's many buildings here. Perhaps I'll look for this for a very long time. Ooh, a note! Hell, the details for invention haven't arrived yet. Apparently, the infection has already reached the suppliers. But I don't understand how the infection got so far. If these parts are not inserted into the installation, then there's no way we can stop the infection. So, the information of course is interesting, I just don't understand what to do with it. Perhaps the invention is a time machine which was mentioned previously. Maybe this is a time machine, I don't know. We still have a whole city to explore. Let's go! Look, I have never seen such a fish before. Oh, 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 oh! She wants to attack me! It's really going to attack! Wow, this is some kind of underwater snake! There were many skyscrapers in the city, and at the top of one of them I noticed some kind of botanical garden. It was definitely worth a visit. So look, I see some kind of box here. We definitely need to go in here. Yes! A oh, note, the time machine is here. You will find it. Explore the city to find out more secrets. And not everything was so simple in this botanical garden, because there was a secret passage here. Construction helmet and a screwdriver. Great. This is exactly what I need. Most of all, I don't want to meet any monsters. But the monsters were the whole secret. At that time, I didn't know yet, but in fact, a huge predator lives in this city. Even a kraken doesn't stand next to it. 72nd day, I decided to take a short break from the city and work on my liner a little. Well, guys, it's time to make our magnificent magnificent farm on our liner. I've never actually done it before in my life. I think it'll be interesting. Just think, my own wheat farm on a liner. Let's plow the ground to the end. We already have water and we can start planting seeds. Super cool. And they also had an idea. Why not make a watermelon farm? Let's place the water, plow the dirt and plant our seeds. Awesome. There were a huge number of plants for my own liner, a house on the water. I even managed to work a little on the floor and I even grew my first tree on the liner. You can suggest in the comments what I should do to our ship and I will implement the best ideas in the next series. On the 73rd day, I went back to explore the underwater city. My task was to learn more about the time machine and how it can be used. Well, and of course, to find cool loot and not meet all sorts of huge scary monsters. So friends, we have such a building in some kind of shell. To be honest, I don't know what awaits us here, but today we're gonna explore it. Well, what does we mean? I want to do that and you don't mind. Just think how deep we are underwater. Okay, there are lots of empty floors, but there are also floors that are full, like this one. Okay, now let's try to get inside. The most important thing is that there is no water here. We'll have to build to there. Once inside, I began to explore the boxes and found another clue to the same time machine. Perhaps there will be a component for the time machine and the coordinates. So yes, remember that we have a time machine in that building and we need to find some components for it. And here are the coordinates where I hope one of them will be. If we can collect all the components, then perhaps we can travel through time. But honestly, I don't know because they didn't tell me anything, just as they didn't tell you. We are just guessing in this world, trying to explore it and understand what my team came up with this time. So let's go explore the next building. I hope that we won't meet any tough monsters here because the Kraken was enough for me. To be honest, I don't really want to meet anyone else here. It's still difficult. You see how the map is made. Many floors are actually empty and you have to look and try to find floors that are full, possibly storing useful information. And they urgently need more night vision potions. Oop. That's it. Look, in this building, the last two floors can also be looted. Let's land on the so-called roof. Done. Let's go down. Okay, there are no monsters. This is already pleasing. Okay, there's another note and something that looks like a hammer. With the help of the time machine, you can deal with this infection. I would still like to know how to fix it, though. That's exactly what I'm thinking. On day 74, I went to the first coordinates that I had previously found in the note. An island of golden space awaited me. Yep. That's what it's called. It's not an ordinary place, but a whole puzzle that you need to complete to get the first component of the time machine. I just swam to the island and I already see such interesting monsters, but none of them won't ever stop me. Look, there is gold everywhere around here. Some golden pillars. Let's be honest, nothing seems right to me. Strange islands, those square heads. I can't even be sure whether they're friendly or not. Golden guardian. I, I, shoot! 
Recharge! Oh, 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 one HP, one HP, guys! Oh, 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 easy! The island turned out to be much more complicated than at first sight. These monsters surrounded me and I barely fought them off. And I still don't even know what else hides here inside the island. Don't you think that this column here looks very suspicious? Especially Especially this foliage with a chest behind it. Oh, note! Explorer Joe once found this island. He was able to turn anything around into gold with a touch. This is what ruined his life. Things he denied became a reality for him. Joe's treasure is hidden somewhere. Whoever finds it and brings it back will get whatever they want. Explorer Joe, Golden Island? Ah, nothing is clear yet. There was an actual building on the island. At first, I thought that the item or block that we need is here. So the first thing we need is to thoroughly study it. I dealt with monsters that were inside, as well as a lot of other things. Below me, some kind of mess with magma blocks, golden pillars, uh, golden parrots and goblets, and even pirate cannons. And there is also an infection icon there. There is a whole set here. There is even a sheep. <laughs> The evening was approaching, so I decided to hold my research and think about where I would spend the night. Of course you would say it's possible to sleep on our yacht, but I'll tell you one thing. When the infection reaches such a level, when the ocean and the sky turn red, it is completely unsafe. There's monsters here that can appear and simply end our survival in one moment. First of all, I chopped some wood, got some coal and iron, a standard set, and decided to settle in this building. At the same time, I will try to explore everything here during the night. Well, well, the sun is going down. Just in case, I'll close the doors and hope that no one will fall on us from the sky. Last night was full of monsters, so I decided not to risk it and hide in a small box. Wait for the morning and continue my exploration of the island normally. On day 75, after waking up, I looted the box and found a new note there. Return Joe's treasure to the island to get what you want. Joe wants his gold back. So we have gold here, golden apples, golden ore, a piece of paper. As I thought, this gold is cursed. Jeez, why did I take it then? Take your apples back. I had enough problems here. That's it, no gold in our inventory. Meanwhile, outside the window, a monster suddenly appeared. It's probably a byproduct of the infection. Uh, well, of course, a monster attacked me. Infection Keeper. The monster was not too strong. After killing it, I found another note. The note told the story of the explorers who landed on this island. After a while, their simple items began to turn to gold. It was also said that they sensed violent earthquakes. Maybe it's because we touched the gold. Is it cursed? I don't know. Oh, but I'm sure I won't touch it again. I have the exact same opinion, guys. Well, screw this gold. You can't even make normal tools out of it. Let's see what else was on this island. Hope we can find some more clues. At first, I saw a canopy. There, I found a golden revolver. No, I won't touch it no matter what. And a paper. Where did Joe go? Well, how should I know? I walked around the whole island and studied every block. This is the first time I have ever reached a dead end in my survival. Uh, to be honest, I I don't even know what to do at this point. But there's one thing that I missed, a little box, and it gave me some hope. Take a look, a box. What about the bush? I don't get it at all anymore. And then I realized that I need to look for bushes. The result didn't take long to see the light of day. Oh, oh, I think I found something. Exactly, here it is, a hint, a secret place. Okay, this one looks like a beak, also a box. Inside, I found a chest of Golden Joe. A question now is, what should I do with it? On day 76, I still thought that the key to the solution was in the main building. Joe wants his gold back. How can I give it to him? G give to... That's it, I can't read anymore. And here again, at that end. But under the drawer, I noticed something dark, which turned out to be a hopper. Only by giving Joe's treasure to the island can you get what you want. Yes, let's try. At the same moment, thunder rang out in the building and a bush appeared. Incredible. This is just one of the locations that the survival has to offer. And the further we go through it, the more interesting things we will see. Where did this bush come from? Tell me. Fell out of the cobweb or something? Look for the secret door under the house. Excuse me? Seems like it turned out to be an important plot item. The search didn't take too long. I found it within two minutes. Look for the secret door. Uh, wow! Is there a secret door here? Alright. I don't know what awaits me behind this door though. Here we have a chest and a note. Finding this bunker wasn't easy. I was completely sure that there was absolutely nothing here. I hope I find what I'm looking for. Just read my mind. A time machine component? 
we are going to travel through time. To do this, we need to assemble three components. So far, we've only found one. If we'll travel into the past, we'll be able to stop the infection and survive these 100 days. There is almost no time left. My team told me something terrible was going to happen on day 80. Unimaginably terrible. So we had to hurry. Having sailed away from the island and returned home to my liner, I decided to customize it after all. The infection won't go anywhere, but the ship needs to be improved. As for me, the most important thing is the level of protection of our ship. It was a fairly low level, so the first thing I decided to do was wrap everything in barbed wire so that any monsters couldn't reach us. It turned out quite well. By the end of this, day 76 came to an end. If you remember, in the last episode I had to leave the island and now my whole life and all my things are on this liner, which with the mods can move thousands of blocks. I already had a small farm, but I decided to make it bigger. I think we'll start. There is never too much food, so let's make the second floor of our farm. It turned out pretty cool. Now I will have more bread. The rest of the day I decided to spend on making a huge warehouse on the lower deck of our liner. It turned out super big. I'm looking into the future and understand that I'll definitely need a warehouse. Oh friends, I did it. This is officially the largest warehouse in the history of all of my survivals. I spent almost all my wood making it. On the 78th day, in the morning I decided to go on a little trip and I didn't leave empty handed. Guys, I see something on the horizon. I wonder what it is. Is that a car? Okay, now let's try to carefully park and have a look. Oh, oops, who are these guys? And they, of course, turned out to be unfriendly. Yes, friends, it looks like a flyover, part of a larger road. Why is it here in the middle of the ocean? I don't know. To begin with, my task was to deal with all hostile mobs and then examine the place for loot. It was difficult, but we won. This is a road, there is a car and a small camp. And most importantly, they grew potatoes and beetroots here. Good enough, let's plant it on our ship. Much to my surprise, I found a note. Just like we all like it, a note. You need to remember the login password, 3452. And the password for the office is 4732. Take the card there and go to work. The password from the entrance and from the office, I don't see anything similar here. Based on this, it's not clear what is being said. Perhaps the answer is here. At the top, I found a sheet with coordinates and immediately decided to follow them. It was far enough to swim, so on the way I met various dungeons, ranging from underwater ruins to flyovers. It was all the same flyovers following the example of what I found at the beginning. Morning. One day before the increase in the level of the infection, we still managed to reach the cords. Good morning, friends. To make everything clear, I'm at the coordinates and absolutely don't see anything around. The only the only thing that there is, is a pebble, but I think it's just a normal generated structure. Wait a minute, what is this? Never mind guys, I guess I was wrong. There is a door here and I think that we'll try to get inside. But as soon as I opened the doors, guests were waiting for me. What a lunatic, uh, leave me alone, what kind of monster are you? Okay, okay, the most important thing is that we're inside, let's take a look. Inside the room there is such a door with a lock, a hole in the floor, as well as many doors and there was a small problem with them. I just love my team because there is absolutely nothing behind these doors. I think I'm gonna go down there first. I ended up in some other room, so to get here you need to enter the code. Let's try for example 4732. It worked! Here's the card folks! Excellent! Now we need to go upstairs and open this door. Just great! Looks like there's a whole labyrinth here. Production? For the production section, I don't know the code. I found the code for this door in the first note, because if you remember, there were two of them. In the middle of the last room in this building was a chest that also had a code. And yes, while I was going around the whole building, I found it too. Guys, there's a chest here! Here we need a password again. How many passwords are in this survival? Oh wait, I have a piece of paper. One, two, three, four. And the reward just surprised me. I found an awesome gun, ammo, a note, and most importantly, the second component of the time machine. Let's read the note. The weapons that were created here should not fall into anyone's hands at all. It's too dangerous. On test, it dis... The disintegrated half of the polygon. We need to destroy it before it's too late. Apparently, it was talking about the gun that I'm holding in my hands. It looks so of course, awesome. Friends, I think we need to get out of here. We already found the second component of the time machine. And now the last, very last component remains. I really hope that we find it soon. Only at night, I returned to my liner and began to wait for the 80th day. The first thing that caught my eye was that the color of the moon has changed, the same as the whole sky. What happened that day will shock you. It all started when Minecraft just froze for two minutes. When it stopped lagging, I didn't find the ocean when I went outside. There was just a wasteland all around.
The whole ocean just disappeared. Now we have to survive on its bottom, or what is left of it. Now new and most dangerous monsters will appear in the survival. Fish, sharks, all of this is in the past. The corals also dried up. From my ship, I could see ruined houses. It was strange because I don't remember parking my liner near any buildings. You are probably interested in my reaction. To be honest, I'm shocked. Look, these are mutants walking around. These are okay, but this one looks very serious. Based on what is happening, it's time to take off the fins and all of that, and put on my normal armor. My poor Yat, guys. She has served me as my faithful companion for so long. How much we have been with her, can you imagine? And now she's just standing here on the sand because the ocean disappeared. First of all, I decided to go to the abandoned buildings. Along the way, I met new dangerous monsters. I feel like they're pretty strong because they move very quickly. How much HP do they have? Ouch, ouch, three HP left in total. I have 2 HP. I forgot to take ammo. As you understand, the monsters turned out to be pretty strong. And given the fact that I always survived in the water, I didn't think we needed reinforced armor. And that was our first problem. I remember that I have this gun. Let's try to test it now. Oh my god. Look at the size of this crater. Now that's what I call a gun. Look, our Bathys cave now also just lies on the sand. We're approaching these buildings. I don't know what I'll find there. In any case, it's interesting because we're walking on land. I am even afraid to imagine what kind of monster is in there. One, ready? Two more are running towards me now. This is the first time I actually see them. Let's take a look. Maybe there are some boxes here. Okay, bandages, waffles, and a meds too. Near the buildings, I found a bus stop. There was a very important note in there. So, Zeman, you've played it. The infection completely dried up the ocean. You must return it back. Hurry, you have very little time left. Otherwise, you will share the same fate of the ocean. Sounds menacing. There is only 20 days left until the end of this survival. It's obvious that I need to hurry, but I'm absolutely not prepared to survive on land. Because these 80 days, I've been preparing for survival on the water. This is the first time I've experienced such difficulties. In the meantime, I found a second note that made it even more clear about what is going on. You probably don't know how the buildings appeared. In addition to the fact that the ocean is completely dry, your liner, along with your belongings, has been teleported to the other courts. I hope you can still use the time machine to fix everything. Ugh, only a golden apple and carrot calmed me down. So, my ship has been teleported to a different location. How did they do it? Wow, my team has already reached this level of programming. The hardest day of the survival is coming to an end. In the evening, I only managed to make a small ladder on the other side so that it would be faster to go up and down. Day 81. Since I spent all the wood on the construction of a warehouse on the liner, I need to replenish its reserves. So all day, I was busy making a new tree farm. It is good that there were lots of dirt and saplings though. Day 82. I realized that there was a huge number of different places around me. I thought that by exploring them, I would just get answers to my questions. In particular, where to look for the third component of the time machine and how to fix it in order to restore the ocean. More monsters, new ruins. Let's see what we have here. Let's try to shoot a huge charge. Why aren't you dying yet? Hey, not bad, except I only have one ammo left. One is ready, and the second is also on the way. And the third one too. I like this gun so much. It's really cool. In the building, I found meds, a burger, and a cool helmet that looks like a combat one. I look like a warrior. Day 83. In the morning, I collected weed from the two-level farm and continued to explore the locations. Wow, look, I haven't seen the green ones yet. Let's try to hit them with our cannon. They seem to be much stronger than I thought. Okay, monsters, I see you have a wild party here, but I really want to loot this place. Come on, come on, come on, get out! Ah, uh, phew. You can call this a gas station. Well, or what is left of it. Imagine that all of this was underwater. I took fuel from the station and found some new info. I hate my job. It's a terrible bore. There was only one car at 3 o'clock. This is too much. The only entertainment here was only the radio, which had already stopped working. The new warehouse seems to be jamming all the signal. I can't work like this. I'm quitting today. Here's the warehouse coordinates. Yes, finally! A normal lead of our plot. Well, I hope so. Otherwise, the infection will simply destroy us soon. Ah, it's a pity that these cars are just decorations and you can't ride them. I wouldn't mind transport right now, I'm tired of running around. On day 84, I improved my ship, or rather the house. Back then, I didn't know that in a couple of days, I would have to disassemble it. Day 85. Today, I decided to go to new coordinates to find the warehouse mentioned in the note. We got a bit of a sandstorm today, and here is the warehouse. It seems to be not far from our ship, but I've already walked around here, so I'm a little confused. I still ran into green mutants outside the warehouse. This meant that they were strong 
stronger than the previous ones and completely infected. Better to bypass them. I'm about to run out of ammo. With the help of a pickaxe, I carefully made my way inside. I don't want to meet any bats here. Yes, a note. We received something strange by mistake. It looks like a part from some car. It weighs a lot, so I'll put this thing in the warehouse until the courier comes back and takes it back to the office. Apparently, the third component of the time machine was located in this building. I immediately began to look for it. I had to act carefully because if this monster notices me, my survival can end in the same second. Let's take a quick look at the boxes. A note and a time machine component, guys. That's it. We have all three components. You can't get to the time machine just like that, remember? Your ship can't sail anymore. You need to make it fly, otherwise you just won't make it in time. Most likely, you're already on the 90th day. You need to hurry. How can I make it fly? So far, I'm not on my 90th day yet. My team thinks quite low of me. There are more boxes here. Wait a minute. I think I know what this is. I know this mod, guys. It's from the mod that allowed us to move our liner. With it, we can make our ship fly. There are a lot of these blocks. With their help, we'll be able to make a balloon out of our ship. That's it, friends. We have to leave because it's already night and I feel like that monster will soon suspect something. Yes, the ocean is gone, but still, we can travel on our ship. On day 86, I started to equip my ship. Some details have come to light. As a matter of fact, friends, I started making such a schematic balloon and even attached it to our ship. The problem turned out to be that my ship was just too heavy to fly. We'll have to take it apart until it can fly. It was sad news because you know how much time I invested in it and how hard I try to improve it. As a result, we now have to disassemble it to the minimum possible weight. I think you would like to know how much we have to disassemble it. I'll tell you how much. We are way over the weight limit. We'll have to demolish our house. Maybe this extension. I really hope that we don't have to touch our warehouse because all these blocks weigh quite a lot. The liner could be left to build a new balloon, but this survival is conceived as survival on a ship. We have used a variety of vehicles and have not abandoned any of them, so I want to end my survival on the liner by all means. I had to disassemble almost everything, a farm, the warehouse, houses, even barbed wire and lanterns, but these were not all the problems. To truly make a building flyable, it must be detached from the ground, it has to be in the air and that's why I had to dig out all the sand under a liner. It took two and a half days, I didn't think there would be that much sand. Interestingly, nothing happened on the 90th day. I think this is because throughout the survival we try to reduce the level of the infection as much as possible. But what will happen if we don't have time to save the ocean before day 100? Well friends, let's try to launch our magnificent ship. Take off! Wow! Look at this! The question is, what did it cost us? Now we are heading for an abandoned city, which used to be underwater. Three days later, we reached our destination. Judging by the coordinates, it's around here somewhere. We won't get too close though. Let's leave the ship somewhere around here. It truly looks incredible. Let's take the components, get the resources, and go to the city. I was amazed when I saw the city. All the water just disappeared. Little by little, we are getting closer to the city. Just imagine, if you can see a small block of stone over there, then about this height was the surface of the water. It's so high. I have no idea how all this happened. Dead corals, look. They used to glow. And even algae grew around. We arrived at the building we were looking for. Here is our time machine. Look, there's a portal. I don't think it was here before. Where do we put our items then? I remembered that there were hoppers here, so I decided to dig up the bottom of the portal. Here they are, friends. Let's get started. The first component, the second component, the third component. Oh, wow. For the first time in my life, I'm activating a portal like this. Let's see what awaits us on the other side. I got teleported to a very strange location. Moreover, all the things from my inventory just disappeared. Okay guys, I have three hearts again, just like on the first day of our survival. Look, there are some strange islands around, and we are on one of them right now. This place is somewhere between worlds, and it should tell us the story of why the ocean became infected. When we get to the point, we can save it and bring everything back. Steel sword, steel plates, and a book with a pen. Nowadays, the ocean is heavily polluted, and everyone knows that, but certainly not the architect of the plant, who decided to pour directly into the river leading to the ocean. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to keep working. I had steel plates in my inventory, from which I made myself some armor because all my things are gone. So, steel axe, oak planks, and sticks. I found a second chest here, and there were more wooden planks. Let's try to bridge up there. There was a chest on the second island, which revealed in more detail what my plan is. Because like you, I don't understand anything 
at all right now. Tens of thousands of years of long history. Let's start with the medieval age. Looks like we need to go there because the tower looks medieval. I hope I have enough blocks to bridge all the way there. Otherwise, I'll have to look for a different way. Finally, friends, I'm here. Let's take a look around the area. Look, this is the ocean and it's absolutely not infected. The water is crystal clear. So we climbed up to the very top of this tower and there is another chest here. Arrows, a bow, a red shield and a book with a pen. When the ocean was once clean, not everyone respected the environment and took care of our nature. Hence the consequences. I think we need to go to the future. Apparently, this island was the future. It was already quite late to go there, so I decided to spend the night in the tower and on the 95th day, continue my journey. In the morning, I bridged up to the new island and there were guests waiting for me. Okay, friends, I'm on the new island and I see a green alien over there. I don't know, a mutant? Yes, but I just only have a sword. Oh, and a combat bow. And that's it. Okay, let's see if I can handle it or not. How much health he took away? He removed almost half of my HP. Stay where you are. To defeat him, I spent almost all the arrows. I killed him with the last arrow. Right ahead, a building was waiting for me. It was the lab where the infection came from. Okay, look, there is a building here. I suggest we go into it. Yeah, it all looks interesting, friends. Office, the laboratory. The laboratory, as I understand, is right here. Stop, don't go any further. Wait, I, ow, ouch, ow. Yeah, I understand. We need another way there. Go Going outside, I found the entry to the window. I got to the control center and turned off all the turrets, thereby passing further. Next, I found a note about some kind of vending machine that supposedly there was a secret door and some kind of code that I had to enter there. When I found this place, I wasn't mistaken. Wow, what kind of adventure is this? Wow, look where we got, some secret place. For the entirety of day 95, I went around this laboratory, which told me that the infection came from here due to the so-called human factor. The only way to defeat the infection is to go to the last, most extreme island, on which you will need to beat the boss. Well, friends, I'm ready. I didn't find any new armor, but guns for sure. And I also have an ender pearl, which right now will allow us to move to the island right away. Great, we're already here. Above is the inscription. Look, Lord of the Infection. The most serious and biggest boss of this survival. If I manage to defeat him, then the ocean will be cleansed. So friends, he is running at me right now. Carefully, carefully. Oh wow. He's still breaking blocks there, guys. I need to gently push him away with this gun. Ah, 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 half of my HP. Carefully, let's shoot with the rifle. Guys, 4 HP. I have these, these, a whole stack of these things that can restore my HP. A little bit left. A little bit left, friends. Last bullet. The ocean was cleared, the water returned back, and the sky also became bright, light, and clear. The message of these 100 days is as simple as its whole meaning. Take care of nature as well as the ocean, because everything depends on you and me. We completed this survival in 96 days. Let's get as many likes as possible under this video, and maybe someday I will release 200 days. That's all. Like this video, and once again, subscribe to the channel. Good luck to everyone. Zeman was with you. Bye.